not so bad this way. There's not so bad. But Val gets she comes out. Look. Mm -hmm. See that? This is all open. I'm not moving the camera. Once the knee is exposed, in this section you're going to see us remove the tibial component. It starts off by removing some overhanging bone on the anterior aspect of the tibia and then taking a high-speed burr with a pencil tip to define the interface between the titanium structured metal and the bone. This is important so you can properly place your oscillating or reciprocating saw in the right pathway. We prefer starting removing the tibia with a oscillating saw because this enables us to get very close to the edge of the structured titanium. There are two things you see in this view right now. One is excellent exposure, which is absolutely required. The second is the use of a heavy reciprocating saw to come across the tibia. We find this is much more effective in this direction than an oscillating saw. You'll see that if you properly use the oscillating and reciprocating saw, you'll be able to easily remove the implant without causing unnecessary bone damage. When you remove the posterior capsule attachment, be sure that you point your blade away from the neurovascular structures in the back of the knee and point it anteriorly and towards the tibia. One of the problems with structured titanium is the metal debris. We have found though that this metal debris does not attach firmly to the soft tissues and can easily be removed with a jet lavage at this point in time in the case. What is left if you successfully remove the implant at this time are the two pegs that are well embedded in the bone. We can see here at this point in time we have very little bone loss in our removal technique. At this point in time, there's a good opportunity to remove scar tissue in the posterior aspect of the knee to define the tibial edges better and for improved motion postoperatively. The technique at this point in time is to use a high-speed 
pencil tip burr to outline carefully the edge of the circular pegs. Doing this will enable you to avoid any bone loss as these pegs often come into contact with the endosteal surface of the proximal tibia. If you properly loosen the peg, it will tap by quite easily with an impactor. At this point in time, you can easily freehand remove any of the debris on the tibial plateau surface to improve the cement bone interface for the new implant. It is important to remove any excess soft tissue that is covering the implant bone interface. We like to initiate the removal of the femoral component 
with a high speed pencil tip burr. It is important to get to the posterior aspect of the femoral component and to do this you need to remove soft tissue and have adequate exposure. In this case we've placed a homin to retract away the patella tendon. Sometimes when there is overgrowth of bone that is interfering with visualization of the implant bone interface, you can use a 6 millimeter high speed burr to carefully remove this. If you properly disengage the implant bone interface, you can easily remove the femoral component with no excessive bone loss.